It was a couple months ago. I was out to dinner with some very close friends of mine. My friend's wife asked me growing up if I ever remembered just a happy day. If I ever had just one happy day. I've been an intense control freak most of my life because my life was always totally out of control. My mom died a brutal fight with cancer. I was her caretaker for five and a half very long years. I've buried my entire family, so I've always been obsessed with controlling every aspect of life that I could. But sometimes there's circumstances that are just beyond our control. I was just watching TV with my daughter and parts of my face, it just felt different. I couldn't really pinpoint what was going on. Brushed my face and I felt like a hair was on me and then I noticed it just didn't feel right. And it just got worse and worse. The next couple of days my hand was off and the whole left side of my body. So I was going to doctor after doctor. You know, I had some MRIs and July 16th, 2016, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. The doctors told me based on the extent of the damage in my brain, I probably had it for 10 years before that. One of the main symptoms of multiple sclerosis is depression. It's hard not to slip into that, well, how did this happen, and start backtracking. What caused this? Who did this to me? I start trying to play the blame game. Generally speaking, 70% of people with my type of disease developed secondary progressive multiple sclerosis where you see people in a Stephen Hawking-like state where they're just confined to a wheelchair and they have almost no mobility. 70%, that's a hard number to swallow. When I was a kid, my mom brought us to Alvera Street near downtown LA. And they had this booth set up where this old man was working on glass blowing and a little glass menagerie. And I was just transfixed by the way he moved his hands. I wanted that dexterity of a craftsman. My wife told me a long time ago that she loves watching me sculpt because of the way my hands move. And I strove for that my whole life. I finally have that. I'm that guy somebody noticed. And that's one of the things that I worry about losing the most as my left hand starts becoming more clumsy and less agile. And it's sort of terrifying to think that, you know, my hands now can't unlock a door. My left hand can't pick up a coffee cup. I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know if I'm gonna wake up and be blind or my leg's not gonna work. I mean, pre-diagnosis, I took a lot of that for granted, knowing that you're almost completely out of control. You just have to let go and do the best you can and hope for the best. I wrote a letter to multiple sclerosis. And I thanked my disease for helping me slow down and focus. Focus on the positive and gives me perspective about what's important. My friend had asked me if I ever remembered just a happy day. The trauma and abuse and homelessness and destruction, deaths that I've survived. If I ever had just one happy day. And it took me a minute to really think about it. And I looked at her and I said, every single one of them was a happy day. They got me here to a point where I could move past it. I just have to enjoy what I have left and embrace the ways my body is changing. A lot of people use phrases like warrior or battling. I just can't identify with turning my body into my own enemy. It's got to be from a place of love and positivity. You're going to end up dying a warrior rather than living with this new compromised reality. 
So I try to live my life with purpose. I don't want to be a fighter. I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to be thought of somebody who's battling anything. I watched my whole family die of victim mentality. I don't want to spend any time feeling sorry for myself because there's still a lot of life to live. My name is Matthew Black, and this disease does not define me.